Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and it's time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Sorcerer in the North by John Flanagan, and this is book 5 in the Ranger's Apprentice series. So, I'm not going to go too much into things, because spoilers, but I really enjoyed this. I thought it was a great continuation. I just feel these books keep getting better and better, in my opinion. Will is a full-fledged ranger now, and he has his own fife to look after, and it's an exciting new chapter in Will's life. Now, I was surprised that we did that big a jump, because he was only a couple of years into his training in the last book, and probably even behind in ranger standards because of the whole drama with Scandia and, you know, being kidnapped and all that. So he got a nice little jump there. So he is a young man now, not this little teenage kid. So we got the next big bit of drama in Will's life now that he is a ranger who is in charge of his own fife. So that's really all I dare to say about this book because of spoilers. So other than to reiterate that I really liked it, I thought it was a good installment to this series, and I highly recommend anyone who has gotten this far yet to keep reading. I'm just going to go into my more spoilery bit, so if you have not read this far yet, I suggest you click away now and come back after you catch up. So to go into a slightly more fuller synopsis, Will has his own fife, and this fife is a little dull compared to what he's used to, which only makes sense. They're probably going to give a brand new ranger a more challenging fife to look after. So while Will, you know, gets used to his new responsibilities, and kind of figures himself out some, they give him a nice quiet fife. And this quiet fife just isn't quiet for him, it's quiet for everyone else. In fact, a lot of the knights and the battle school training in this fife have not been stellar. This fact quickly changes with some Scanians who are doing some raiding down the coast, are heading back up north, and their raids didn't go so well, so they're gonna try and raid where Will is stationed. So, you know, the Battlemaster and the Baron of this fife are kind of panicking. You know, they're realizing, crap, we are unprepared for this, this is not good, they're gonna take everything and hurt and kill a whole lot of people. Will steps in. And I just, I just loved how Will handled the situation. You know, he handled it calmly and got things settled nicely, no one got hurt, and the Baron and Battlemaster quickly learned a nice little lesson. So, so far, Will's time as a ranger has been pretty successful. Oh, and he also managed to gain a new companion. He has a Border Shepherd dog who he found on the side of the road on his way to his new fife and nursed back to health. She was hurt. Her previous owner had seriously done a number on her. Will took care of her and now he has a very loyal dog at his side. Just, this dog is so adorable. He hasn't named her yet, but she is so adorable. I've only had a few dogs in my life, you know, three to be exact, two of which I have now still, and out of these three, two of them were Border Collies, and they are just great dogs, and all I could see was my dogs when I was reading the bits about this one. They're really smart, very loyal, and just all around really good dogs, so really connected with that. But of course, we can't have a story without some bigger problem than a few Scanians. Alice comes to visit Will, and she tells him that Crowley and Halt need to speak to him. So, you know, he leaves the main bit of his fight to go see what's going on. Apparently, there's been some talk of sorcery up further north, and they need someone to investigate, and they figured they should send Will. Mostly because he's a young man, he's a good kid, and it's easy for people to talk to him. And he can easily pose as a traveling bard, basically. So they give Will a nice little disguise as a traveling minstrel and send him on his way. They are sending Will up to his castle, Mackendall, and this castle is very important. Basically, this castle guards an entrance into their country, and it basically guards their country from tribes of Scotty, which, you know, would happily just, you know, stroll right in and cause some serious trouble for this country. 
So this castle is important. They can't risk anything happening to that or the people who guard it. So basically the person in charge of Mackendall is struck down by this mysterious illness and people are freaking out about sorcery because apparently centuries ago this guy's ancestor pissed off a very powerful sorcerer and this sorcerer put a curse on him and his line, family line, and people are saying the sorcerer's back now and yada 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 and basically Will needs to investigate, see if there is some truth to these claims of sorcery and take care of the problem. And I did like how Halt and Crowley didn't totally dismiss the claims of sorcery. Halt, I believe, said, yeah, most of the times things have an explanation. But there's a very small, maybe 1% chance that a situation cannot be explained away via normal means. He has seen some stuff that he cannot explain. So he's not going to totally dismiss the idea of sorcery. So Will is doing his thing, the Lord is sick, and his son is in charge. And not many people like this son. Apparently he's not very popular, he's not really good looking, he spends more time reading books, he's more of a scholar than a warrior, and that doesn't really fit in well with this castle. Meanwhile, I believe it's his cousin is a knight, a very popular knight, and a lot of people like him more than this young lord. And they're happily following the cousin more than the young lord. I do like the life message that is kind of put into the story as well. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Alice does come up to help Will. She's masquerading as a lady. And she's there to give Will a hand. Just Alice I love. She is fabulous and I ship her and Will so hard. And apparently Horace is on his way up there too. Halt is feeling a little nervous about Will being up there with no backup. Yeah, he has Alice, and Alice has training of her own, but he'd feel more comfortable if someone else was up there with him. They can't really afford to send any rangers up there because that would instantly look suspicious. So they're like, you know what? Horace is someone these two will recognize. Horace is extremely capable. He's been a knight for a few years now, and I most certainly trust him with Will and Alice's life. So Horace is going to be heading up there, so he's probably going to be a good part in the next book. So going back to that life lesson, apparently Will kept thinking it was the young lord who poisoned his father and is trying to buy for power and let the Scotty invade and all that. But it actually turns out that it is the young lord's cousin, the knight. Now I'm probably going to butcher both these people's names. The young knight, Kieran, poisoned the young lord, Orman because the young lord is basically set to inherit the castle if his father dies. And he doesn't want that. He wants to be the head honcho in charge. Because he made a deal with the Scotty to let them come in, you know, do their thing. And he kind of ruled over this little area. So he uses the same poison that he used to poison the lord on Orman. And this is very slow acting. Orman knew Kieran was up to something. So he was trying to avoid this kind of thing, but didn't work out for him. He's really sick, and he's going to be slowly going into a coma like his father. He confronts Will, because he's realized that Will is not the barred minstrel person he's trying to pretend to be, and he recognizes him as a ranger. So this guy is smart, and Will is thrown for a leap for this, because he thought it was Orman who was trying to take control. And just... Some things that Orman have, had said really struck me. It's really easy to paint someone who's unpopular as a bad guy. It's basically the gist of what he said. It was very normal for Will to jump to conclusions about him because he wasn't Mr. Friendly and charismatic. No, not a lot of people like him. Meanwhile, Karen it, is basically the complete opposite. So it's easy to like him and to think the best of him. So Will quickly gets Orman out of the castle. Apparently the sorcerer that is hiding in the woods, he's basically an herbalist, a healer, and a lot of people are freaking out thinking that he is this bad sorcerer because his name is similar 
to the sorcerer from the legends from years ago that cursed Orman's family. And he still helps people. He takes in a lot of outcasts from surrounding villages and just some come to him, some he finds. These are people who have been deformed or had something happen to them to make them different, to make them outcasts from normal society. And he gives them a place to call home. So Will gets Orman to him just in time. And around this time is when Kieran starts to push things forward. He has to find Orman because if he's still alive, there's not much he can do. He needs to find Orman. He's paint, trying to paint Orman as a traitor. He's trying to pin his own crimes on him. And he finds out that Alice isn't the lady she's pretending to be. So he has Alice captive. He finds out that Will is not a bard. He is more than that. And now he basically needs to go after Will too because Will knows the truth. He can't let Alice go because she knows the truth. So now that Will's cover is completely blown, he has to try and get Alice out because he's not going to let one of his best friends and of course a girl he really cares about get hurt. And he also needs to take Karen down as well as all the men loyal to him and stop him from letting the Scotty invade. So that's just a little panic inducing. That's a huge task, even for him now as a full-fledged ranger. And even with horse on the way, that's kind of a big thing. And he does no horses on the way, so he, as far as he knows, is without backup. Just, I'm really excited to keep reading. I'm so excited for the Siege of Makanda. So yeah, overall, I thought this was a excellent installment to the series. So yeah, that's it for this book review, and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading, my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.